Mark Spencer here from rippletraining.com and applemotion.net. In my last tutorial, I told you how to get the Motion 4 templates that show up in Motion 5 into Final Cut Pro 10. What I mean is here in Motion 5 under Compositions, we have a bunch of preset templates that were originally part of Motion 4 that are all available within Motion 5. However, none of these are available in Final Cut Pro 10 unless you go through a process of publishing them, which I showed you how to do in the last tutorial. If you did that and you go to Final Cut 10 and you go to the Generators browser and you go to Motion 4 Templates, if that's what you named it, you'll then have all of your templates available right here in Final Cut, which is awesome. You can preview them, bring them into your project, change the text, etc. So that's great. But one thing you can't do with these guys is change the colors. So I want to show you how you can easily set these things up to change the colors directly in Final Cut. Now what I'm going to do is an example. Each template is going to require a little bit of a different process, but this will give you the general approach on how to do this. So I'm going to take this one called Pulse Open. If I skim over it, we can see the animation. And that's what we want to uh, change. So I'm going to right click and choose Open in Motion. In motion, my goal is to find how the colors are determined and then change them. And I'm going to do a little bit of a shortcut in this process. First of all, we've got a background element here. If I open it up, we see there's a color solid. I'm going to select that color solid. Then I'm going to go to the inspector. And we can see here that's where the color is determined for the background. You can see I can change it to anything else there and make it look terrible or make it look nice. I'm going to undo that. And what I'm going to do is just right click. I can right click directly on the word color or I can use this little animation menu right here and just click on that and choose publish. That means that this color swatch will now be available in Final Cut Pro 10. That's like all there is to it. It's pretty cool. Okay, so next I'm going to deal with, I'll open this here and we have all of our different scene elements in here. So I'm going to choose this folder here that contains this group that contains all of these layers and all these groups within this group, I'm going to add a filter to it. Filter, color correction. I'm going to start with a hue and saturation filter. And the reason is I want to remove all the existing color before we change anything. So I'm going to use that filter. I'm going to take the saturation all the way down. And that takes the color out of all of the graphics in this project. If I sort of scrub through it, you can see all the graphics are now black and white. From here, we can choose add filter, color correction, and colorize. Now with a colorize filter, anything I use in the black and white, and the black will affect it a little bit, the white will affect it much more, will change the color of the project. Now, I need to move it below the hue and saturation for it to have any impact because it's doing these in this order. So now that we've got that set up, this will have a slight impact, the color of the remap black, and the remap white will be the primary driver, but I can use this now to change the color to something else. Therefore, what I'm going to do is go ahead and publish this remap white. I think I'll leave the remap black alone because it has very, very little impact on the overall coloring of the image. So I'm going to right-click on remap white and choose publish. And that guy's published. The last thing I want to do is deal with the text. I'm going to do it the same basic way. In fact, I'm going to open this guy up and select by holding the shift key down, both filters applied to this group, hold the option key down and drag up to this text elements group in order to apply them both to this group as well. And I'll select the colorize, test it out. We're not getting what we want here. Let's try to move this above. There we go. Try some different colors, remap white. Okay, so I want the remap white. So once again, I'll choose publish. So I've just published three different parameters. So let's check them out. I'm gonna select the project in the layers list. I'm gonna to go to the project tab of the inspector and here's our published parameters. Now it's not very obvious what they do. So let's fix that up a little bit. This one is the background color, so let's name it background color. This next one, we can test it out a little bit, is the graphics color. Graphics color. And this last one is the text color. So let's call this text color. 
This really isn't the order I want. It's really backwards. So I'm going to move the text to the top and the graphics to the middle. And that makes a little more sense. I'm going to command click on this line just so it's not selected there. And there we've got our three different uh, colors for our project. Let's change the graphics back to the default. It was kind of this yellow. So it's similar to how it started out when we first saw it. A little bit of orange in the edges there. Let's do this. I can't get the orange completely out of there. I'm going to go ahead and publish the uh, white for this as well so that we can adjust it more completely. So I'm going to choose this colorize and I'm going to choose the remap black, excuse me. I'm going to publish that as well. Back to the project. And this guy will be graphics, let's call this graphics edge color and put it right up here. And then we'll drag from this color swatch to the next one so that it is fully this bright garish yellow. Okay, and then let's make the text color a little brighter. There we go, I'm gonna hit Command S to save. And now I'm gonna hit Command Tab to go back to Final Cut. That's really all we had to do. So I'm gonna select this pulse open. I'm gonna press the W key to do an insert edit at the beginning of my project. Place the mouse over this, select it. Let's go to a point where we can see the text as well. And here in the generator tab of the inspector are our published parameters. So I can change the text color. I can change the graphic color. And I can change the edge color of the graphic as well, maybe a darker blue or something a little bit lighter. You don't see, his doesn't have as much impact, but it definitely has an impact, especially early on if we scrub back in time here and watch this unfold. And there is a very quick and easy way that you can take these Motion 4 templates that you now can access directly in Final Cut Pro 10 and adjust them in motion by finding how to change the color and publish those parameters so you can then have a lot more creative flexibility in how to work with them in Final Cut Pro 10. Again, I'm Mark Spencer. If you're interested in this whole process of publishing and rigging with Motion 5, you might want to check out our training on rippletraining.com to get deeper into how to manipulate these motion projects. Thanks for watching.